As a result of that case, I got labeled a commercial lawyer. Oh, Lanier. He'll, oh, by the way, don't you know those three law firms that turned that case away have got to be kicking themselves in the pants? Ooh! Ooh! Anyway. We want to be gracious in victory as well as defeat. Um, mm, nailed it. Um, really expensive grinding wheels. That got a write-up in the USA Today and some other newspapers, and I had a fellow who read it, a lawyer in Alabama, who called me up and said, hey, you need to take some asbestos cases. If you can do that with that case, I'll bet you can do wonders. I said, okay, I'd love to. So he came over and he brought me some asbestos cases. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I'd never done asbestos work. Um, these cases come in, and so I decided that I'd just go to the courthouse and find other asbestos cases where they list all the different defendants, and I'd just sue them all. I'll weed them out later but I'll just sue them all. I sue like hundreds of companies on behalf of, of 1,500 plaintiffs. And I start trying to weed them out. And I weed out a few here and I weed out a few there and a few pay money here and a few pay money there. But the bottom line is most people won't pay me any money because they say that these are Alabama plaintiffs in a Texas court and a Texas jury will not award them money, especially when they're not really very sick. So these companies, I get it down to a, maybe 10 or 12, and the court sets 21 of my plaintiffs for trial. So get my numbers here. I have 1,500 cases, 1,500. Court pulls out 21 and says, we'll try these 21 as a model at one time to try and see what these cases are worth. David, these were O slash ones by a doctor who was under indictment for fraudulently reading x-rays at the time. So I say, great. So we're Friday a week out from trial, 10 days out from trial, and the judge orders us to come into his courtroom to try and mediate or settle the cases and just work out agreements. So I got to stand up and give my mediation speech to the 10 parties, the 10 defendants left with their lawyers and their insurance people. And I said, guys, I am so sick and tired of the last three years hearing, Lanier, we're not paying you money because A, you're not an asbestos lawyer. You're a commercial lawyer. B, you uh, uh, have Alabama plaintiffs in a Texas court nobody's going to like. C, they're not really hurt. Not, and that's before they even get into their own defenses. So I said, look, I'm sick of hearing that. So here's the bottom line. I'm going to try this case. I'm going to try it against one of you. I don't care which one. But we had a saying growing up, last one in is a rotten egg. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but that was one of ours. Okay, last one in is a rotten egg. So if you want to settle and get out, great. But the last one standing at the end of the day, I will not settle with. I will try it, just to make an example out of you. Because I have 1,500 of these cases to move, not just 21. So we go in, we start settling, 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 settling. And I get it down to two. One that's got a lot of exposure and pays a lot of money in cases, CCR. And one that's never paid a dime in the history of asbestos litigation. Not one red penny. They've never been found guilty. They've never had to go to trial. No one's ever tried it against them. They are back row players. They're barely in the courtroom. Carborundum company. They make grinding wheels. Well, I uh, said to the Carborundum company, come on in, guys. I need some money. And they said, we never pay money, and we can't pay you. It's a domino effect. If we pay you, we'll have to pay him. We'll have to pay her. We'll have to pay them. We don't pay money. That's all there is to it. I said, you don't have to pay me. Here's what we'll do. We'll just say, you agree. I'll let you out of all 1,500 cases. You're gone out of everything I own. You're out of my life. In return, you give me or you agree to pay to the court $10,000 of the filing fees and court costs. So you can still tell the world you've never paid a dime in settlement. You're simply paying some of the court costs, which ultimately would inure to my client's benefits because I deduct those from whatever money I get from my client. They said, well, let us think about it. They come back in and they said, we'll pay $6,000. I said, wait a minute. I want 10,000 measly dollars? For 1,500 cases and you're negotiating with me? You're offering me six? They said, yeah. I said, all right, here's the deal. I got to talk to this other defendant. If this other defendant will pay my money, then you're last one in and you're the rotten egg. If the other defendant won't pay, I'll take your six. 
They said, okay. So I bring in the other defendant. I said, here's the deal. And I tell them what just happened. I said, from you, I need $10,000 per plaintiff. I need a total of $210,000. The fellow's name was George Jacoby. He said, you won't try it against them. You'll still just take their six. I said, oh, no, I'll try it against them. He says, you will not. Nobody tries it against them. I said, I will. He says, no, you won't. I said, yes, I will. He says, I'll pay you $210,000 to see you try it against them. <laughs> Deal. We shook on it, walked out hand in hand to go, uh, or arm in arm to go uh, 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 eat Mexican food. Walked right by the carborundum people. And they said, what, what happened? I said, oh, you're, you're the rotten egg. And we walked out. Well, I don't think they think, thought I'd ever try it. So now fast forward a week where the Friday before trial, I get a somewhat frantic phone call from their lawyer. Uh, Mark, this is Jeff Marsh. I said, yeah, hey, Jeff. Uh, how much that $10,000 you really need? I said, Jeff, you're last one in. You're a rotten egg. <laughs> he says, well, I know, but everything's got a value. I said, no, you're last one in. You're a rotten egg. Well, what are you saying your demand is? I don't have a demand. Mark, I'm going to get in trouble with my client. You better have a demand. I said, Jeff, okay, fine. I'll give you a demand, but I'm going to put it in writing with these very clear terms. It's non-negotiable. It must be agreed to by 5 o'clock today. I said, I've been working all week getting ready for trial. <laughs> So, so I'm going to give you a demand, non-negotiable, you must do it by 5 o'clock today. He says, okay. So I send him a letter. It says that. I want $100,000. And you're only getting out of these 21, and you must agree to it by 5. At 2 in the afternoon, I get a letter back from him offering me $30,000. Now, these people could have paid 10 just a week earlier, but they fought over four grand. Now he's up to 30, and he's only getting out of 21, not 1,500. I ignored him. Five minutes till five, I get a call. Hey, Mark, it's Jeff. You never, you never countered. I said, so? Well, I mean, you know, you were at 100. I offered 30. What's your counter? I said, did you read? And he says, what? I said, I told you it's non-negotiable. I don't counter. Non-negotiable. <laughs> he said, well, yeah, but that doesn't mean you won't counter. I said, look it up. That's what it means. He said, well, yeah, but I mean, people put that all the time. They don't really mean it. I said, well, then I'm not a person because I mean it. He says, what are you telling me? I said, I'm telling you, you got five minutes to agree to pay 100 grand. Well, we're not going to pay that. I said, okay, bye. <laughs> so we go start trial. Oh, we're kicking them. We're kicking them hard. I mean, you know when you're doing it, and it's working, and we're doing it, and it's working. <laughs> oh, he comes up to me about a week into trial. How much of that 100000 you really need? I said, what? He says, remember, you were at 100 we were at 30 How much of that 100 do you really need? I said, are you doing drugs? <laughs> he said, what? I said, I don't understand this. I mean, I'm speaking English. You're speaking English. But somehow, we're going like this. He says, what are you telling me? I said, I'm telling you the 100000 was off the table Friday before trial. That's been two and a half weeks. I've been working my butt off in here. I've got a bunch of people working for me. We've been putting money into this case. I'm not taking hundred grand now. He said, well, how much do you want? I said, eh, 21 plaintiffs, 100 apiece. 2.1 million. Well, I'm not going to pay that. I said, okay, I've got to get back to work. Come on, I'm about to cross-examine your witness and tear him up. I did. <laughs> Closing argument. We've tried this case now six and a half weeks. He comes up to me and says, how much is that 2.1 you want? <laughs> and I just looked down and pat him on the back and said, Jeff, I'm not settling this case with you, buddy. We got we to gotta get a jury verdict. $118 million. $118 million. Six weeks earlier, Give me 10 grand and I'll let you out of all these cases. No, we'll pay six. $118 million verdict. It's crazy.